This is Lauren Siebert. I'm an Applications Engineer in the High Speed Signal Path Division of National Semiconductor. Today I'm going to introduce the LMH6521 and LMH6522 High Performance Digitally Controlled Variable Gain Amplifiers. These are dual and quad fully differential amplifiers designed for the communications markets. The LMH6521 High Performance Dual DVGA features a low impedance differential output which is suitable for driving a wide range of loads including a wide range of filter impedances or it can directly drive the input of an analog to digital converter. This amplifier also features a 200 ohm resistive differential input for high performance. The uh, key specifications for the LMH6521 include its high linearity as evidenced by the OIP3 of 48.5 dBm and the second order harmonic distortion products of minus 84 dBc. To facilitate the use in IQ or quadrature receive paths where the balance between the A and the B channel must be very well matched. The phase and gain matching are characterized at 0.45 degrees of phase matching and 0.04 dB of gain matching. The LMH6522 is a quad DVGA. It features a low impedance differential output as well and has a 100 ohm resistive differential input. This amplifier also has very good specifications on linearity with an OIP3 of 49 dBm and second order distortion products of minus 78 dBc. These two new amplifiers are the most recent addition to National's differential amplifier portfolio which includes a large number of single and dual differential amplifiers with very good performance designed for IF sampling receivers and other similar applications. To go along with these amplifiers we also have low noise phase lock loops like the LMX2531, high performance clock chips like the LMK048XX series. The uh, high performance clock chips offer good frequency performance with especially low jitter for low noise applications or high dynamic range. We also offer ultra high speed analog to digital converters, part of our big gig portfolio. One example is the ADC 12D500 or 800 RF. We also have very high performance IF sampling data converters like the ADC 16DV160 which go well with these amplifiers. The LMH6521 and LMH6522 were designed with many applications in mind, although the communications markets were the primary focus. The communications markets focus on base stations and remote radio heads, in addition to satellite communications and communications systems test equipment. Military markets that could be served by these parts include signal intelligence, radar systems, and LIDAR. Test and measurement Equipment such as spectrum analyzers and oscilloscopes could also use these parts. These parts address the new trends in the market for higher data capacity, better receive sensitivity in addition to energy efficiency by combining multiple channels into one radio. Here is a block diagram of a typical radio receive path. There's multiple amplifiers and digital converters, mixers, amplifiers, and filtering. The LMH6521 and LMH6522 are designed to be the driver to the ADCs and either receive paths or in a DPD loop where the final power is sampled and fed back into the system so that the uh, system can add pre-distortion to linearize the power amplifier. Trends in the market include wider bandwidth, multi-carriers in one radio such as multi-carrier GSM, multiple standards in one radio, and the new three generation and four generation data services which require more bandwidth to provide customers 
with the uh, throughput that they need for their mobile devices. The LMH6521 and 6522 enable this higher performance in modern radios by providing very good distortion performance over a wide range of filter impedances. This gives system designer the flexibility to choose the filter impedance that is most manufacturable and provides the best analog to digital converter performance. As you can see by the blue trace on this plot, the OIP3 performance of the LMH6521 and 22 is very constant over the load, whereas with the high impedance amplifier, as the current required to drive the load increases in the lower load resistance, the linearity goes down because the higher impedance device is required to drive a lot more voltage to achieve that same amount of current in the load. Some of the benefits of the lower impedance filters include better ADC performance because the ADC is sampling the voltage very fast, the lower impedance filters can settle the uh, input transients quicker. Another benefit is that at the higher impedances, the capacitors in the filter can become very small, which makes them susceptible to parasitic capacitance on the PCB board. This makes the filter hard to design and hard to manufacture as PCB variations become more of a percentage of the, uh, the lumped element values. The low impedance output, of, as mentioned, can easily match multiple, resist, multiple resistive inputs of filters by putting down termination resistors on the outside of the amplifier. And as you can see from this plot, we support a wide range of filter inputs with very good performance. Another feature of the LMH6522 highlighted in this chart is the low power mode. When there's no blocker and the dynamic range requirements of the radio are lower, the amplifier can be placed into a lower power mode that still has adequate performance to handle multiple channels of communication, but because the instantaneous dynamic range requirements are lower, you can lower system power by dropping the amplifier power approximately 20%. The green line shows the common characteristic of a low output impedance amplifier of being able to drive more power into a lower resistance load. This is similar to how you can get more power from a 4 ohm audio speaker than you could from a 16 ohm speaker with the same amplifier. The LMH6521 and LMH6522 are able to drive large output amplitudes as shown in this chart. Linearity holds up very well up to 8 dBm of tone power. That's 8 dBm for each tone. At 0 dBm, which is uh, more in the range that a lot of systems would operate in the absence of a blocker, OIP is up at 50 dBm, which means 100 dBc of intermodulation rejection. That's 100 dB of dynamic range. The LMH6521 and LMH6522 being designed for remote radio heads and other environmentally exposed applications was designed to have very stable operation over temperature. This chart shows temperatures from minus 40 to plus 85 degrees C. The supply current as shown in this graph, has virtually no change. The uh, other characteristics of the amplifier are also very stable over temperature. In the case of multi-carrier GSM or up other applications where a wider gain range is required to accommodate more gain range of input signals from the amplifiers, two amplifiers can be cascaded together. The LMH6521 and LMH6522 are well suited for this because the low output impedance can easily drive the fixed input impedance of the next stage. These amplifiers offer very good performance in this configuration. The LMH6522 in particular can provide dual channel diversity in this cascaded configuration with the four amplifiers working together to provide gain for two channels. In this plot, we see that when you cascade two channels together, you can achieve up to 46 dB of gain. 
that's at the maximum gain setting with a gain range of 61 dB. This is a, a very wide range of performance that would support many applications. The LMH6521 can also be driven in Cascade. There are two amplifiers in one package, so they can be configured as a single wide dynamic range amplifier. Thank you for joining me today where I presented the LMH6521 and LMH6522 high performance digitally controlled variable gain amplifiers designed for the communications market. These parts are fully released and documentation for these parts is available on the National Semiconductor website at national.com. Thank you.